Lightning is one of nature's most common performances. A single bolt is five times hotter than the sun and there are over three million flashes every single day. This wall of clouds makes me a little nervous. What will that bring tonight? And when we're on the boat and a thunderstorm starts to brew, let's just say lightning is one of those things that can really get the heart racing. That was right in front of us. I mean, think about it. You can run, but you can't hide. There is no escaping it. But what if there are a way to protect our boat from lightning strikes? As in like an anti-static force field that would keep our floating home safe and sound. I know it sounds like science fiction, but what if it wasn't? See, we're in the middle of building a hybrid electric catamaran, and we wanna keep all that shiny new tech protected from nature's most electrifying elements, especially because catamarans are twice as likely to get struck as monohulls due to the increased surface area. So while we were in Florida, the lightning capital of North America, we decided to conduct an investigation. So my mom was recently struck by lightning. Technically it wasn't a direct hit, it was a proximity hit. She is in a camper van and she called me and said, this thing is breaking, my generator's not working, my AC stopped working, all my lights are out. And I said, mom, you definitely had a lightning strike. And she said, well, what do I do? And I said, well, call your insurance first, but second, where are you? And she fortunately was in Florida. She wasn't getting a lot of support from the dealership. So I told her to call just catamarans. And I said, if anybody knows lightning strikes, it's those guys because, well, they're in Florida. They deal with boats and there's a lot of lightning strikes. So it got us thinking, what can you do on a sailboat to prevent lightning strikes? And prevent might be the wrong word. I called Raf and I said, are you guys doing anything? He said, yes, we are. We've got this new thing. Let me show you. And by the way, I've got three boats that are dealing with lightning strikes right now. So that's why we're here today to go look at these boats and look at the solution. Before we dive in too deep, I just wanted to say this video is not sponsored by Just Catamarans or any of the products that we might talk about today. This is just us trying to figure out what is the best way that we can prevent lightning strikes aboard. We were at the dock plugged in, and so then we thought it might be a surge through the shore power, but it wasn't that. Yeah. We actually were getting our sail service, so then when they were up the mast, we're like, can you see if there was any wounds in or out? And then we had a diver come and nothing. That's why you think it wasn't a direct hit, it was just close by proximity. Proximity, yeah. 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 Ooh, you don't even have to be the direct hit, and no. everything's gone. Yep. Yeah. So you said that you could actually see the bird marks from where the light, yes. lightning struck? from down here you could see the marks, I mean with the glasses. Oh, okay, but so it was up on the mast then? Yeah, it was up on the mast. So okay. it hit the VHF antenna. We walked into the boat and you could smell like burnt electronics because we weren't on the boat. You were uh, there soon after. Oh yeah, because yeah, we knew. We were like, oh man, Spanish that was wells. like... And we were in Spanish oh, okay. Wells in the Bahamas. We walked into the boat, uh, it smelled like burnt electronics and all of our electronics were kind of like housed in a thing where you remove the countertop and we opened that up and a big flame went <gasps> well, there were a few things that didn't work and like all right i'll just pay for them and we'll move on but we kept finding more and more stuff that didn't work and these guys have dealt with a lot so they know that pretty much everything has to go i mean air conditioners everything we weren't on the boat at the time we got back to the boat lights wouldn't work the acs wouldn't work so we got a new inverter we got some of it working and then after closer inspection everything electronic was pretty much fried and that is like gut punch it was and since we were at the dock and we were like visiting family and friends didn't really occur to us that we should check the nav and all that stuff and then once we started oh, no. turning everything on it didn't work okay so this is our first big takeaway if you even suspect that you've been struck by lightning, run and exercise every electrical device as much as possible because you're gonna have to prove that it's damaged to get insurance to replace it. The things start failing sequentially because when something is struck by lightning and it's still working, imagine adding like 10 years onto something. You just stress every electrical component in there. I said inside a boat that just left. He was dying for me to replace his inverter charger but I couldn't prove anything wrong with it. It was fine. And then during the process of being here, it glitched out and shut down. We got it back working again, but that was enough sign for me to, to know it was stressed enough to me to consciously be able to say, there's something wrong with it, may replace it. If you get struck by lightning, it's affecting all of like your, your nav and all these other things. Does it hit your batteries? 
Like, can it fry your batteries? Like, yes, you can fry them for sure. I, they often, not the average drop-ins, survive. And the cells usually aren't damaged. I've seen them on the harder cases that the brains are damaged internally. Would an AGM be the same issue, or is it specific to lithium? Please say no. It's the same way uh, AGM and lithium, the benefits. Um, lithium is much more forgiving. It's the same thing with lightning, I've seen. Lead acid gets hurt easier. Often, okay. yeah. I, I probably praise more lead acids during a lightning strike. So one more win for having lithium batteries. There you go. Okay, I'll there you go. Yay. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's why I'm like, please yeah. say no. Okay, this is another big takeaway because if we get struck, we're going to want to monitor the battery's voltage and the amps coming in and out to see if anything is out of the ordinary. My average lightning strike, I would say, is sixty to eighty thousand dollars for an average boat. Bigger ones I've done are is three hundred thousand dollar range. Oh, wow. Big, bigger boats, more electronics. We lost all of our electronics, so yeah. it was a fifty or a sixty thousand dollar, you know, hit. All of the BNG is fried. Both inverters were fried. Two AC units were fried. One immediately. The other one is intermittent, and today I can't get it on at all. The water maker at first we thought like do for a flush and so we flushed and then now it's not working at all. Yeah, Spectre's a high tech water maker so there's a lot of sensors and monitoring. We have Yanmar yes. engines and we lost both of the computing units on them. With the new Yanmars and all the EPA regulations, everything has to be computerized. So that's the big concern with a lot of clients nowadays is all the common rail engines. The Yanmars are common rail so there's one main ECU and then about 12 sensors you got to replace as well on the engines typically on curiosity you had older engines that yeah. were you could strike them with lightning a hundred times and they'll keep running <laughs> yeah but now <laughs> that's what we were always told you said if you ever get struck by lightning just don't turn the engine off and yes. you're good to go yeah, yeah. they'll stay on or put yeah. the screwdriver yeah. the <laughs> screwdriver start method the time and hassle it's, exactly we're trying to be in the bahamas <laughs> oh, right so i'm i mean that's what i'm thinking yeah. about is this beyond just the price it's like this is taking you out probably for the rest of your like cruising season potentially or at least weeks at a minimum well, the supply chain's really far behind right now, so oh my, yeah. it's going to take a long Those time engines. to get some things. Yeah. yeah, strange things with the lights, like the LED strip of lights, like one third of it is out. And the underwaters still work. So even though That's the engines job. were so damaged, it's, those underwater lights are right by it. You would have thought that they would have caught yeah, something. But refrigeration, we're fine. We have cold beer. <laughs> Priorities. Lights on our helm. Like, really yeah, yeah, on. Lights on. Yeah. We're all out. Okay. You get the idea. Lightning can zap anything and everything requiring a huge electrical refit. And that's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of money. Does having been struck by lightning affect the resale value of a boat? No, okay. usually improves Our boat it. we bought um, was struck by lightning. Typically lightning doesn't do any structural damage, it's electronics. So the cool part about getting a lightning strike is you get all the electronics, so it would only increase your value. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Little disclaimer here, you've seen a lot of thunderstorm footage and to be truthful, we didn't capture it all. Now we've shot plenty of thunderstorms over the years, but right now we're living out of a suitcase and I don't have access to all my hard drives, which is where today's sponsor comes in. We've been using Artlist since 2018 and last month I upgraded to Max. They have plans for pros, teams, and more, but we chose the Max Social Bundle, which lets us download music, sound effects, and HD video footage. The website is intuitive, and here's exactly how I use it. With a few clicks, I can find a song that perfectly matches the mood. And what's really cool is Artlist hand selects and supports these small independent artists. I can click over to sound effects and do a search or browse the spotlight genres, which is exactly how I found the thunderstorm sound effects that I used. Browsing the stock footage works in exactly the same way. We can download as many assets as we want. We can use them in our YouTube videos and our Instagram or any other socials. But the biggest benefit is it's all royalty free and we can monetize without worrying about copyright strikes. With the Max Bundle, we also get free plugins and templates. There's an image editing app and the easy to use video editing software called HitFilm. It's a huge bundle that puts all our tools in one spot to help make our videos better. We pay for the yearly package, which saves us 50% off the regular price. But if you use our link, you'll get an extra two months absolutely free. It's an incredible deal, but the best part is there's no risk to try it out because there is a money back guarantee. I'll drop a link in the description and we'll get back to Lightning. Ah. Insurance, how has your insurance been That's a big question. through this? Um, 
they sent a surveyor to do a lightning inspection and he was really good but it is a company in a different country and the adjusters in a different state Ooh. so that's been a little turbulent i think they believe us but um the boat couldn't be hauled out on the west coast so we had to get over here and we were glad we were already on rough schedule we had to navigate the boat around with just navionics on our phone yeah <laughs> we didn't have any radar no um we had nothing so and we didn't even have autopilot so we had to hand steer so my husband and I, and we hired a captain, uh, we did shift work. For how many days? Thursday through Sunday, so. Did you go around the bottom or did you go through the Okeechobee? Or? Oh no, we have a 75 foot mast. We can't even go oh, under a seven mile bridge in the Keys. So you'd have to drop the mast. We took the long yeah. way. Ooh. Well, that made you appreciate all that tech when it is actually working, did it not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but actually, it was a blessing in disguise because you wouldn't have, we wouldn't have wanted to be on the West Coast with Hurricane Ian. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Sort of worked out. Making that insurance claim, how was that process? Was your insurance good about it? Or was it? The insurance was actually really good about it, although they dropped us like a hot cake like two weeks after. Okay. So, and of course, they say, that's not the reason you just no longer fit into our criteria huh. you know and also it's made it a little bit more difficult to get insurance even though it's a no-fault claim mm -hmm. they ask have you had a claim and that's a claim so you know I'd like to avoid that again yeah, yeah. you deal with insurance companies all the time do you ever have issues where somebody tries to deny a claim and then doesn't end up wanting to replacing things? Uh, most major insurances are great about taking care of your boat. One of the difficult things is when your insurer is overseas, they need to trust you that you're not pulling a fast one. So it's a little slower. It'll work, but it takes more time. It's more painful. If it's someone here in the States, sometimes uh, a vendor like just Catamarans will reach out to someone they know and say, hey, we're working on it. And they get really excited because you have a relationship and you know you're not going to rip them off. Because there's a lot of rip-off artists. They see insurance, they go retail plus 20, plus 30. They just wow. go really high in prices. So that's why like their insurance was three different quotes before yes. they even approve anything. And that's not n normal all the time. Usually I they'll trust someone to move forward. I can tell you that we did get an email um, that we will not be renewed. Our policy will not be renewed yeah. in November. I don't know if that is something on their business side or if this is lightning related. Uh, we were disappointed, but we have a good broker, so. Okay, so there you go. While the insurance company may be reasonable about handling the claim, we should be prepared to find new insurance because we have talked to at least a dozen people who've all said exactly the same thing, that after they made a lightning strike claim, they got dropped for vague reasons. And then there was one guy that Raf told us about that didn't get dropped, but they tripled his deductible. Again, lightning's funny. It, it'll take out some things and not others. It doesn't seem to matter what the mast height is or if we're an anchor or a marina. Lightning doesn't discriminate. I think the most we've ever seen a hit in one strike was here in the marina. Been a super active year and I had one boat struck and it lit up seven boats down the road. So at one time I was working on seven lightning strike boats. Wow. And is yeah. that connected to shore power? Yeah, it was different variations of damage. Yeah. That was a bad day. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, it's, insurance is great. It's good for us, but not good for the clients. <laughs> of course, it's easy to say just avoid thunderstorms or sail around them. But the reality is that lightning can strike from up to 10 miles away from a storm. So we don't even have to be close. I mean, people have been struck on a seemingly perfect sunny day. Lightning is everywhere. So unless we're gonna be willing to live in Antarctica, there is no avoiding it. And the best that we can do is try to prepare and protect ourselves as much as possible. So everyone knows the uh, little feather duster at the top of the mast for lightning protection, and we've all seen those get hit. You always wonder how just a little feather duster could stop lightning. And we've never encouraged it, just Katz always says, keep your insurance strong. Now this is where things get interesting, because unproven theories run rampant, and most people just resort to, well, I guess it's better than nothing. But is it? Because the insurance companies have standards set for hurricane preparation and fire prevention, but there are no standards for lightning protection. And if there were a proven solution, they would require us to have it or at least offer a discount to install it because lightning claims are so expensive. But there's something new to the marine market that sparked our curiosity. 
good lessons learned, but so now Raph is going to tell us about a really cool device that's hopefully going to mean that we never get struck by lightning, right? That's yeah. that's the thing. Well, that, and that's the that's, guarantee. We'll just get that on camera. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't Raph guarantee says. it, but I'll send you to their webpage. <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion of what works and what doesn't. But recently, we had a company come to us and talk to us about a patent they had got the permission to use, which is from Nikolai Tesla. He was trying to track lightning with this little orb. And we all seen those little spikes on top of buildings. Rather than the building getting hit and blowing a hole in the roof, it's attracting it and dissipating it yeah. so he was trying to create his own to come up with something that was different and he found it never got hit by lightning not once when he was testing in all these thunderstorms so Nikolai started studying what he did and he realized he was actually deionizing the air a lightning you have a, the two different poles and in between there needs to find a path and what those paths are is the ions so you got these little ticklings uh, of power and then these ions start creating and the lightning follows that down what it's doing is dissipating all those ions it drains it doesn't allow them to build up so the lightning sort of becomes like a void in the area of your boat different size modules handles different areas so like we were joking around during the storm the boat next door has one installed i said you might be a little covered it just maybe <laughs> extended your boat a bit it's actually the first product that i've seen that i've actually convinced might work we we're talking about the lightning protection system the new nikolai tesla model one of the ways we drain to earth which is our water on a boat uh, is through grounding plates. We put one on the farthest forward end, it could be starboard or port, and then we put one on the farthest aft end opposite of each other. So there's wire running from here to a junction point at the base of the mast, and then it goes down to the other side the same way with the wire. We talked about the resistance in doing tests. And on this boat, the resistance was, as we learned, this is probably one of our first catamarans on the Leopard of this size. We ended up having to tie yeah. in the chain plates to get the right resistance, um, to get the numbers they wanted to make sure it was working properly. Pretty cool system, and every boat seems to be a little different because of how they're built and how everything drains and the rigging. You've now got this nifty new device installed. We can all look up and <laughs> was this like a no-brainer for you? Like whenever you heard no, about it? No, it was it? not a no-brainer because it's obnoxiously expensive. expensive. Yeah. In fact, I think obnoxiously? you told me about it. <laughs> it's a little pricey. It's pricey, yeah. and you I know, and of course, Annapolis last year. It's one of those yes. things that there's yes. no proof. There's no, you can't prove that it works. Yeah. yeah. So that's it, and that's it's. It. Um, so he says it's aluminum, but it is not heavy, but it's not light no. when I think about something that's up at the top of the mast. Yes. And imagine that on top of your boat. Maybe not on a catamaran. <laughs> no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, this is the pole we custom make. Standard aluminum mast heads have four bolts. So we tie into that, and obviously that's attached into the aluminum extrusion of the mast. So we're pretty confident it's not going anywhere. Good solid stainless, and they got the hole on the bottom, and that wire goes right in the bottom there. It's relatively simple-ish. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's just the install is kind of the biggest pain. Yeah, it's a lot of labor and bringing a cable down the mast without wrapping other lines and so forth and so on. And if you're lucky, you might be able to squeeze it in a conduit. Yeah. Um, or if you're really picky, we'll drop your mast and put it on a conduit for an additional double the price. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've done a ton of digging around and it turns out that this technology has been around for decades in commercial applications. And huge corporations have trusted this science for years, but it's just now making its way into the marine sector. And no pun intended, but I find it shocking that it's taken this long. I'm stoked that there's even something you're mildly excited about. I sure hope no one ever gets hit when one is on it. Yep, or you're gonna feel real bad, and I'm gonna point to this video and be like, it wasn't me, it was, it was <laughs> all rad. <laughs> So far, it all sounds very promising, but because there's always a but, Raph has only found a couple of companies making such a product, and I did a bunch of digging around and I couldn't find anything else either. And I hesitate to even mention the brand names because I'm not even sure about all of this yet myself. The one Raph showed us is made by Surtec and only claims to protect from direct strikes. And the other brand is Denteco, and it claims to protect from direct strikes and adds another device to protect from proximity strikes. But it's substantially more expensive. And as far as we can tell, these systems only protect us while we're in the water. So if we haul up for general boat work or for an entire hurricane season, what happens then? 
So I did most of the talking today, but what do you think? The skeptic in me says, how is that going to work? I mean, you really got to trust this company to think that they've designed something that will truly work. But at the same time, if our boat was struck by lightning recently and we just went through this hell that these people have gone through, then yeah, I would probably throw 15 grand at a solution that would hopefully ever keep me from having to deal with it again because I just, I can't imagine. I know what my mom went through. I, I know it was just- Months and months, months and months. Because one thing would break and then another thing would break and then another thing would break and her insurance company was amazing and they just said, we'll leave it open until everything breaks. And when you tell us to close it, we'll close it. So that part was amazing. But yeah, I mean, maybe she should install one of these on hers. I, like, I, don't, I, know. I don't know. But if it's a proximity strike, I'm like, oh, it wasn't a direct hit. Like the, the boat here that had the direct hit and you could see the black directly on their mass. I'm like, okay, that was a direct hit. So that little thing could possibly save their asses in that situation. Yeah, I don't know. Do I put one on our next boat? Yeah. It's way up there, it's heavy. Well, we'll have to talk to yeah. HH. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. But it's cool to see. I like the idea of it. It's very neat. But hey, that's just my opinion. And I'd love to hear what you think. If you've had an experience with a lightning strike or you've installed something that you think is really amazing, leave a comment down below and we'll see you next Sunday.